Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will have the first part of the first episode of a new series where we try to find the top performing AGP motherboard. And we will start with an old acquaintance, the ASRock AM2 Enforce 3. This time we will use an AMD Phenom 2 955 CPU. And we will start assembling everything onto the motherboard. We will use the Thermalrite Ultra 120 for this project and this is the radiator It has 6 pipes This is the mounting base and unfortunately we have to remove the original plastic one Since the thermal right base hasn't been used before, it has a small plastic square in the middle, probably for other AMD sockets, and this motherboard is bouncing on that plastic. Once I removed it, I could fit the rest of the components. I'm using the pentadot pattern of applying thermal paste. We're going to use an actual fan, the NF-P12 for this project. And here it is. Let's move to the BIOS and see how much we can push this CPU. As you can see, we already pushed it by 10 units in the name. The initial CPU, the one you have seen me assemble on the motherboard, was good in pushing high frontside bus, but I couldn't run 3D Mark with it over 4 GHz. Fortunately, I had another Phenom 2 lying around that is able to do all the tests at 4.3 GHz with lower frontside bus speeds. We were able to start this CPU with more than 240 MHz, but this is where it's stable, and it could run the tests without issues. With this motherboard, it's unfortunate I couldn't push more than 1.55 volts into the CPU, but I was able to set the Northbridge frequency multiplier to a ratio of 11. The memory is set for 400 MHz, that's a 1 to 2 ratio with the frontside bus, with 54410 latencies. I could probably get a CL of 4 out of them if I had proper voltage adjustment controls. In the chipset settings, I'm running with a CPU Northbridge link ratio of 3 and the RAM voltage is set to ultra high. The rest of the BIOS options are pretty standard and I disable everything I don't need. Let's save and move to Windows for more information. Before diving into the graphics benchmarks for NVIDIA cards, let's do a bit of benchmarking of the CPU. And SuperPi is blazing fast compared to the other CPUs we had on this channel. Sandra 2004 for a 2009 CPU is the last test we are looking at today. And it paints the picture of a CPU that's almost 10 times faster than the Athlonix P3200 Plus or the equivalent Pentium 4. 
we are also making some changes to the graphics card's lineup. And we replace the 4400 Ti with the 4600 Ti. The 5700 Ultra is replaced by an FX 5900. But we will keep the Albatron until the end of the series as I'm not sure the FX 5900 can take many runs. We will also continue with the WinFast A400, but we will introduce an Asus 6800 Ultra not pictured here. Gainward 7900 GS is not going to be replaced as I don't have anything faster than that. We're also going to introduce a GeForce 3. Pictured here is a 500 Ti that unfortunately has artifacts and I had to replace it with the standard GeForce 3. Let's start with the assembly and the tests. As I usually start by capturing the assembly process on camera and one or two weeks later I do the benchmarks, I did capture the assembly of the GeForce 3 Ti500 that I didn't knew at the time that it was broken. Fortunately I had the GeForce 3 at hand and I was able to replace it for the tests. For the GeForce 3 and 4s, we don't run 3 Mark 2003 or 2005, because lacking some instructions, they will not run all the tests. The next graphics card is the GeForce 4 Ti 4600. Only for this motherboard, we are also using a Quadro 4 980 XGL that I received the same day I was doing the tests and I included it because I needed to test it. This card is the equivalent of a GeForce 4 Ti 4800. The next graphics card is MSI's FX 5900 that has a radiator on the back as well and gets very close to the CPU radiator. As I mentioned before, the assembly footage was recorded before the tests were done. All the graphics cards were cleaned and had the thermal compound changed before the benchmarks. This is when I discovered that the GeForce 3 Ti500 had issues and I also broke two small surface mounted devices on the 7900GS. This is why it took longer to come out with a new video.
The last graphics card we are testing today is the 7900GS. Anyone attempting to clean up and replace the thermal compound on the AGP version of this card should be aware that one of the radiator's mounting points is really close to some SMDs and I managed to knock off two of them as I removed it and I had to put them back using a hot air station. Now let's look at the results. It's nothing surprising here, as the graphics card scores are aligned in the order of their release date. For now we are just comparing the graphics card's results, but once we get to test more motherboards, we will start comparing them by motherboard. In the next episode we will look at the ATI lineup and the conclusions. Thank you for watching and see you next time.